Hi and welcome to the fourth episode of the Django package review series. In this one we're going to be reviewing the Django Honeypot packages. There's two we're going to be looking at. Now if you're new to this series, basically we review Django packages and you can find them on djangopackages.org. If they're not on here, you can find them on GitHub, but either way we'll put a link to the package in the description of this video. And basically what we do is provide a very basic review of the package. If you want to follow along, all you need to do is just go to the Django package review repository. The link is in the description down below. And all you need to do is just go to the branch for this video, which in this case is number four Django Honeypot. That's where the code at the end of this video will be pushed to. Otherwise you can follow along from master. And if you code along, you'll end up with the code in branch number four. And so once you've cloned or downloaded this, then we can get started. So here on Django packages, we're going to go to the anti-spam section and we could imagine that all of these packages are used in some way to prevent or help us manage spam. Now we're going to be taking a look at the Django honeypot package as well as the Django admin honeypot package. So they're two separate packages, Django honeypot, which has a GitHub link over here. So I'm going to open that up and then the Django admin honeypot and the link is over here. So I'm going to open that as well. So I'm going to close both those package links and just work here out of GitHub. So if you don't know what a honeypot is, I'm just going to bring this link in over here. So this is from Wikipedia and it just says in computer terminology, a honeypot is a computer security mechanism set to deflect, detect, or in some manner counterattack attempts at unauthorized use of information systems. Now, in some cases they're used to help us detect spam. And that's what the Django honeypot package does. It basically gives us a bunch of, well, what it calls generic honeypot utilities, which are used for detecting spam in, in forms. And I'll explain how this works when we get into an example. But so that's what this package is used for. The second one here, the Django admin honeypot is not so much only spam, but also detecting attempts to log into your admin. And this, this package has a very simple basic idea and I really like it, which is essentially just putting a fake admin URL and changing the actual URL to your admin to something else. So here they've just changed it to secret and then they use admin for the honeypot. So if you're actually trying to log into the admin site for this, this Django project, then you're just going to be given a fake uh, admin login screen. And we'll see what that looks like. But I really like this idea. It's really simple. And this package has 630 stars to back it up. And the last commit right now is on June 24th, 2019, which is under a year ago. So I'm not too bothered by the maintenance of this package. As I said, it's a really simple idea. There isn't much more you can really do except make sure that it's compatible with the latest versions of Django. So we're going to go and install both of these packages. Let's start off with this one, the fake Django admin. So I'm just going to scroll down here and I'm just going to copy the command to install this. So I've got mine open in VS code. And so there we go. Then we can just add admin honeypot to installed apps. So I'll do that. Just add that over here. And then we just need to change our URLs. So let's go to URLs, remove that comment and I'll change this to a path as well. And there we go. So essentially what we've done is changed admin to use the honeypot URLs. So I'll just run the command to migrate and I'm actually just going to delete my existing DB file there. And oh, okay, includes not imported, just import it there. There we go. And then we can run the server. So let's take a look at this. And so here at slash admin, this looks exactly the same as the normal Django admin, which is really, really cool. So let's just try and log in with any random user credentials. So it's just gonna deny every attempt I'm assuming. So now let's just go and log into secret. So this is the actual Django admin and I don't have a super user. So let's actually see if I create a super user, can I log into the super user 
in the honeypot. So I've set the password as admin admin or username as admin and password as admin. So let's just go back here to the honeypot. And if I log in with admin, I can't log in, right? So even with the correct credentials, I can't log in and that's that's good. So let's now log into the actual admin and there we go. And then we've got the Django admin honeypot login attempt here. And there we go. Okay, so we've got IP address, session, timestamp, URL. Cool, so that's actually really, really cool. Of course, my IP address is gonna be localhost, but I'm pretty sure if this was actually hosted somewhere, we'd see my actual IP address. So that's really, really cool. I mean, this package is as simple as it gets. It does one thing and it does that thing well, so I really like this. And so that is that one. Now we can go to the Django Honeypot package. And so the last commit was on 2nd December 2019, which is also pretty recent. So I'm assuming then that the package is Django-Honeypot. So let's just go pip install Django Honeypot. There we go. And then we just need to add Honeypot to installed apps. So let's do that. Then here in the usage, it says you'll most always need to define honeypot field name, which is the name to use for the honeypot field. And on that note, I'll actually just explain a little bit more about why you would use a honeypot in a form. So for people who, under, who already know it, it's pretty obvious, but if you haven't implemented something like this before, basically the idea is if you have a form, let's say it's a contact form, so it's a publicly available form, that means that people can spam it, they can scrape it. And so what you want to do is prevent spam in the form itself by checking what the data is that's being submitted. So you can use a really clever technique and that's by specifying fake fields in the form. And if a bot comes and tries to submit the form, what they'll normally do is look at the most obvious fields. So if you have in a contact form, name, email, and message, it's gonna pre-populate those three fields because of the names of those fields. Because logically it makes sense that those are the correct fields. but those would be some fake fields. The bot will fill in those fields, submit it, and, and then like that, you've just caught spam. So what you'll actually do is you'll rename the names of the correct fields. So you might put a hash on the end of it. You might just call it something entirely different, but you don't want to give it away either. But you'll, you'll see what I mean when we get into an example of this. So let's just go and create a view where we can actually use this. So let's go to just inside the Django package review folder here. I'm just going to create views.py and I'll just say from Django uh, shortcuts import render and then we can just give us and then I'll just say define contact which will take a request and we can just say return render pass in the request and I'll just say contact.html and then we can go and create a templates folder and in there we'll put contact.html and then just link this up in the settings. So let's just go down here, say os.path.join base directory to the templates folder. And then we can import the view over here. So from.views import contact and then I'll just put a path here to let's put it as contact and use contact. Right, then in here, I'm just gonna switch over to a normal boilerplate HTML, like this. You can say this is contact. And here we're just gonna create a form. We're gonna need our CSRF token, and I'll just put a button, say submit, and let's say this is spam contact form. Right, let's go and run the server now, okay. And let's go to slash contact. All right, so here's our spam contact form. I'll also just inspect the page. And let's just bring up the form itself. So right now there's no fields in the form. And if we take a look over here, it says adding honeypot fields to specific forms and views. It is possible to add honeypot fields to specific forms and ensure that specific views check for a valid honeypot in request.post. And this can be accomplished using the render honeypot field template tag. So we load this in a template and then within any form, we can render the honeypot field. And this will render honeypot field name, field name that is hidden by default. 
the name of the honeypot field will default to honeypot field name, which is what we would specify in the settings. To ensure that the honeypot field is both present and correct, you'll need to use check honeypot decorator, which we'd import. So let's do that. Back here in the views, import the decorator, and then we'll decorate it with the field name. So the honeypot field name I'm gonna use is, let's say email. Then here in the template, we need to load the template tag. So let's load honeypot. Just do that here at the top and then render honeypot field name with the field name being email. So let's render it there. Field name is email. So let's go and refresh here. And so now you've got a div here inside the form which has display none as the default. Then you've got a label, leave this field blank to prove your humanity. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And then input type text name email and value as null. And so what a bot would do is it would set the value of this input to be an actual value instead of being blank. But let's just go back here and I'll make sure that this is method is post and just come over here and I'll just set the type here to be submit. So if we come back here, let's just refresh this and I'll go and specify the value here as just something, some random email and say submit. And so here we get honeypot error, email, request aborted. So if we come down here, it says customizing the honeypot display. There are two templates used by Django Honeypot that can be used to control various aspects of how it's presented. So we can modify this template in our own templates to change the way that the honeypot field is rendered. And then we get the honeypot error.html, which is the error page rendered when a bad request is intercepted and it's given the context variable field name representing the name of the honeypot field. So we can modify the way that this is displayed. For the purpose of demonstration, this is pretty good and it's pretty useful because if you've got a bot that's trying to scrape your site or anyone who's trying to spam your site, this is a really nice way to handle that. And so here in the view, we would go and specify a form. So I'll just do the form right here. I'll just say from Django import forms and then we'll just create a contact form here and say forms.form, say email equals forms dot email field. And then we can use that here. So I'll say form is contact form, request.post or none. And if the form is valid, then we can say print form dot clean data. And we can just access the email from that and just return redirect back here. Then in the context, you can put the form here and just pass the context into the template. Then here in the contact.html, we can put the form and I'll also just put the honeypot field over here as well. So like this, let's just refresh the contact page and we'll get the email field here. If I just open this up, then here you can see that the name of this field is email and the name is going to be exactly what we call it here on the form itself. So the quickest way to do that is just to change the name of the field here. And if you do that, then there you can see the name attribute has updated and we can just update this to say email. And there we go. So like this, the spam bot should fill in the email input over here, which has the name of email instead of our actual one that we're looking for. Again, this is a little bit of a quick way to do it. I'm sure there are better ways than naming the field like this, but essentially we can then access the value over here in the clean data. And of course, if we submit this, then yes, I've got an error, but if we just scroll up, there we can see the email coming through and I'll just import redirect to get rid of that. And so like this, we've implemented a very basic way of capturing spam in a form and also taking a look at how we can set up a fake Django admin, which is definitely my favorite part. So if you enjoyed this review, leave a comment down below, let us know what you thought. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.